Welcome to What Is It About The Weather, a podcast where we explore the many ways that weather intertwines itself into our lives. I'm your host, Mark Jelinek. Now, we usually do this weekly, and I usually get this done and posted yeah, sometime on Friday, early Saturday. This week, I think it's going to be about a day late. Well, I know it's going to be about a day late, so I'm about a day late in recording it. Nah, you don't worry about why. It doesn't really matter why. I apologize. I know some of you actually like, you know, have a routine, <laughs> maybe one or two set around when this podcast arrives in your feed. Hopefully the inconvenience won't uh, drive you too batty. Now this week's episode's No Hints. That's what I think I'm going to call it. I haven't decided on the actual title yet, but I think I'm going with No Hints. There's going to be no show notes, no hints, and you'll understand a bit. But before we get into the main topic, hope your weather world is going well. Now, last weekend, after I did the podcast, it's holiday weekend here in the U.S., celebrating Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. And it was right before the new president was sworn in. But it's a long weekend. Decided to go find a hike. And thankfully, I found one with some snow. And you guys know I, I like a good snow event. Now my winter's been pretty I don't I don't want to say mild. I won't say that, but it's been pretty benign. Not really cold, not particularly warm or cold. It's, I would call it probably seasonal, maybe a little bit on the warm side for where I'm at, but but definitely not like feeling like you could go out in shorts even though I did that this week too. Um I would say it's been light on the precipitation side. I mean, that's probably been the biggest thing. Now we had this rain event kind of leading into last weekend in our area, but parts of the area just a little inland, a little further away from the coast, and with some elevation, got some meaningful snow. So went and found a a nice hike and was able to enjoy that. I'll probably, for the art associated with the episode, I'll probably... yeah. If if you're wondering how you see the art, if you go to the patreon.weather.com slash weather... You can see, I, I just pick an image each week because it's different than the cover art that goes with the podcast. It's also the art that I'll use when I put some sort of reference to the episode out on Twitter. So again, you can follow me as it, what is it about the weather on Twitter and you can see those things. Or again, Mark underscore Jelinek as I'll always retweet the the tweet associated with the episode. So you've heard me mention that before. So if you're interested in seeing those images, well, you can see those there. So I've had some weather to enjoy. Looks like I might get a little more snow next week. It's been a little colder. We've cooled off a little bit, but again, kind of reasonable. Now, on the political front, as most everybody who's still breathing in the world knows, the U.S. inaugurated a new president this week. And you're wondering, you may wonder what that has to do with the weather. Well, it has a lot to do with the weather in terms of administering the people who oversee the agencies that are in charge of the weather models and in charge of, let's say, satellite launches, those sort of things. And there'll be somebody new. I mean, that's already confirmed that that's going to happen. I haven't seen, seen kind of a short list of names, but nothing to fit him on that yet. I don't think it's a high priority. I think that agency can pretty much push along without uh, a full-time, per- you know, always there's somebody acting, and usually that's more of somebody that's been in the agency a longer period of time, not necessarily a political appointee, whereas the person that's put in to oversee it, you know, I, I guess the best way to think of that individual is somebody who, yes, they can drive direction, and but they're bridging that gap between whatever the current ad- administration is and what priorities they may have in trying to set that agenda within the agency itself. Yes, that can cause some, I don't know, skips and jumps as you go from administration or different parties in control. But at the same time, that's why you tend to have these people layer a little layer down that has a better sense of, you know, what's been going on in the agency for a long time. All right. Let's get to this main topic. I don't know how this episode's going to go. I'm going to try something new. And like I said, no hints. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do about, I think it's, I think I ended up with a list of about 10 statements. Now, some of them will be pretty short. Some of them may be, statements long word, you know, let's call it 
just a thought. I'm going to, I'm going to lead you in thought. Some of them will be, like I said, you know, brief. Some of them may have more length to them, but the goal is pretty simple. What I want you to identify is what you think the common link is. Now, I'm not going to say there's not more than one because most of these, I have a word and it, just as I go along, I'm going to, you know, or a short phrase, I'm going to create and fill in a story, if you will, for each one of these words, a couple sentences, but that common underlying theme should be within each of these statements that I make. And I'll let you know when there's a new one starting. It'll probably be pretty obvious. But at the end, I'm going to, you know, I'll fill the space. I won't make you listen to pure silence for a while. But I want you to then just write down what you think it is. And then you can send me an, an email. Let me know if you got it right. And, and you'll understand why, why I've, I've kind of chosen this and why I think it's kind of interesting. I, like I said, I wanted to try something new, something a little different with the episode. But I wanted to, um, I don't know, as always, try to maybe provoke thinking about things in a little different way. So let's get started. All right. Number one, you go to a restaurant or in COVID time, maybe you order takeout. Maybe you get some, a main course. Maybe that's some beef or fish or chicken. Doesn't really matter. Grab some vegetables in there. Maybe a starch. Maybe even some dessert. Don't know. Bring it home. Eat that food. Enjoy that food. Thankful for that food. And you do that again and again. Right? That's number one. Number two, you get up. It's a nice day out. It's temperate wherever you are. You make a decision. Maybe it's a local park. Maybe it's something a little further away. But you decide to get outside. And you go outside and you enjoy nature. You know, maybe you're walking through, like I said, a, a city park that has a lake or a fountain. Or maybe you've gone somewhere like I did today. I went and hiked a trail. I was on the Appalachian Trail even for a little bit as it came down and ended up. Nice little bridge over stream. But I got out. It was outside. Some clouds. Some blue sky. But just a nice day to be outside. Statement three. It's been a long day. Maybe a little stress. Maybe it's work-related. Maybe it's personal. But you de decided to call it a day. Now, if you've been at work somewhere, you come home. Non-COVID times, maybe you stop somewhere and meet up with some people. Doesn't really matter. Pop a drink. Maybe have a beer or wine. Maybe some a little heavier. Maybe something not at all. Maybe, maybe you're relaxing as a hot tea. Even an iced tea. Doesn't really matter. Maybe a hot tea with a little honey in it. Solve that up. Maybe even coffee. I don't care what it is. Enjoy that drink. Maybe a second one. Reflect upon life. What you enjoy. Feel a little better. Hopefully a little more relaxed at the end. New statement. You're in south of Chile. Got to take us to Chile. Of course I do. You're in a city called Punta Arenas. Now, you may be around there. There's all these fjords and, and areas with glaciers. But one of the things, you know, Chile's just known for, big, long coastline. So you're at, the, you're at an area where that's accessible. And it's just, you know, where land and sea mix, that, that, that border and the vastness of it, right? You're looking out as far as the eye can see. Now... You're at this place because you're going to catch a flight because you're going to Antarctica. So you take off. It's not probably the best flight in the world. It can be a little bumpy down there, land or sea or air. But you get to Antarctica. See some penguins maybe. Stay at the station down there. I don't even know if that's possible. It'd be kind of cool though, wouldn't it? And you come back. 
new statement. Yeah, it's been a while. I, it, whether it's you're in the northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, this can apply. You go and you put a pair of skis on your feet. Now, I say it can apply because in the wintertime up here, I drove by some people today. There was some skiing not too far from me. And other people, you know, that's you might be at the lake with friends doing some some water skiing. Well, it doesn't have to be skiing, though. Maybe you're a snowboarder. Maybe you just go tubing. And same thing in, in the you know, when you're at the lake. You go, I, I don't know, maybe getting in or two float down a river. It doesn't matter. You're outside. But you're just chilling, enjoying being with other people. Okay. So you got those things and, you, and you're going along. All right, new statement. It's a day you wake up and the forecast was for some storms outside. Right. Maybe you heard them when you first got up. So a little lightning, a little thunder, a little rain. Kind of maybe depresses the day a little bit. I don't need necessarily mentally, but just kind of tones it down, right? But you kind of hear the rain lightening up and you see some peaks of sun and you go outside and there's this beautiful, gorgeous rainbow, right? One of those ones that's so vivid. Maybe it's a double rainbow, right? And you're just in the moment and reminded of how amazing this sort of feature is in the sky, right? All right, new statement. Maybe you wake up in the middle of the night. Maybe you're stuck in rush hour traffic, but all of a sudden you get an urge that you need to go to the bathroom. (laughs) New statement. Daydream. What kind of daydreams do you like? When you have a daydream, is it outside, is it inside? But maybe it's outside. You look up and it's one of those days where there's just, you know, there's a variety of clouds, different shapes. Maybe you are seeing creatures in the clouds or faces in the clouds or it doesn't matter. It's something that inspires you to just kind of lose yourself in time and think about things you love to do or people you love to be with or Places you love to go. All right. New statement. It's time to get in shape. And it doesn't matter, you know, as I've told you recently, I've gotten into exercising with a bike. Some people like to take a run, but maybe it's a warm day and you're sweating. But you got a downhill coming. And you get going fast enough that you feel the breeze coming against you and cooling you off. It's an amazing sensation, right? For as hard as you've worked, now you've got this kind of natural air conditioning effect that's taking hold. All right. Last statement, but here we go. It's a spring day. You open the door, take a deep breath, and you can just smell birth. New plants, flowers all around you. It's refreshing. That's why they did laundry detergents made after it, right? (laughs) April fresh, whatever it is. But there's so many colors and new life, and it's all blossoming around you. Okay, that's it. Those are the statements, all right? Those are the things I want you to think about for a minute. Like I said, as you can imagine, there's going to be a weather connection, but I want you to, if you can come to it, I want to see if you come to something that was underlying in all of those things. And maybe it'll hit you and maybe it won't because there's something that is relevant that we're going to talk about that was present in every one of those things. Now, we're not going to have a chance to review them all today, but if you go back and you think about it, you'll understand 
where each of these things come into play and where that connection is, right? Give you a little more time, right? Give you a little more time to think about. All right. You should have had some time now. Okay. Now, my question is, did you, by chance, come up with water? That's right. It's something as simple as water. Now, when I was going through those statements, some of them may have obviously hit you as water, but that may not have been what you're listening for. Now, you know, weather connection, uh... Hopefully you came up with something weather related, but I kind of wanted to talk about, I don't know why something that's so important to me in weather, and, and we'll get into that, but it's really not just weather that water water's so important for, right? I mean, that was kind of the point of the exercise is Water is, it's quintessential to everything we do. Now, it's an amazing substance, right? H2O, tackling fuel. Those that don't know that reference, uh, Adam Sandler's probably, it's one of my favorite characters of his, the water boy. Tackling fuel comes from that. But it kind of is logical because it's a fuel for everything. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's where your food comes from. It doesn't matter what you drink. It's your your body. Your body's mostly water. Did you know your bones are some like 20% water? Water carries away all the toxins. It lubricates joints. Right? It feeds everything, whether it's flowers or grass or animals that we may ultimately consume or Plants that we consume, for sure. It's everywhere. It's on our coast. It's in solid form, in snow and ice. It's in the sky. Roughly in any given point in time, that somewhere around two-thirds of the sky has clouds in it that people can see. I mean, it's amazing when you think about it, right? It's everywhere and influences everything, Right? It is, without it, we don't live. Uh, you know, the estimates are about three days that you can survive without water. I know that there are extreme cases where you can survive more, but it, it's important. That was the whole point about the bathroom one. Without water, you're not going to the bathroom. Without going to the bathroom, you're not getting the toxins out of your system. It's important. But it's also important in evaporative cooling, Right? It's important in making those clouds we might look at a daydream or creating that rainbow. Okay, so it's always there. It's always around us. And as important it is to us and the world around us. And, and, and as I've mentioned before, you know, I, it, I, I don't just have a, a weather sky component. I've done a lot with hydrology. It's where a lot of my research and my work has been, actually. So once water gets there, and, and what you really need to think about is the atmosphere holds about, I think it's like 0.001% of the world's water. Now, as we know, most of it's in the oceans. But that whole process of it evaporating from mostly the oceans, getting into the atmosphere as water vapor, condensing in the clouds and ultimately into rain or snow, and falling to the ground, and then being redistributed back to, you know, like I said, snowpack. And, and there are many areas around the world I've lived in, in Chile. It was very, most of the water, fresh water supply comes from snowmelt each year. And that's true in many places around the world. But it flows into the fields, it feeds the food that grows. And you think about, but at any point in time, there's this trivial amount. But it is what is weather to me, because it's the part of weather we feel. Now, you could argue that we feel temperature, but you don't 
for the most part, really feel temperature. You react to it. Your body maybe sweats or shivers, depending on if you're cold or hot. But water we can feel, whether it's a snowflake, whether it's a raindrop, we actually, it's, it's tangible. We can see it with our eyes. Right? We, we don't necessarily see the other aspects of weather. Now, we may see aspects of it. For instance, I was out today. It was very windy. Things were blowing in the wind. But I don't always, when, when there's not a strong wind, I don't necessarily feel wind, right? But there's no doubt when you're out and it's precipitating, you feel it. Or even when you're looking in the sky, you see it, right? If you're not around a flag or something that's going to bend with the wind, you don't necessarily see that the wind's even there or that the temperatures are even there. But that water component, we see it in clouds. We see it in rainbows. We see it. We're reminded of it. But just think about how boring weather would be without water, right? Because it's kind of that physical connection to weather for us, just imagine where it'd be. Now, that's not to say you can't have weather without it. We've, we've seen studies, right? And, you know, Hollywood does it for us as well. But, I mean, you know, Mars doesn't have an atmosphere, but we've sent enough stuff there now and have pictures and videos, and we've seen that there are storms, right? And we know this about other planets too, whether it's, you know, Venus, which is a big cloudy planet, as storms, there are moons on other, around other planets that have clouds, if you will, right? And have their own storms. So weather exists. But a lot of that weather would kill us, all right? But it's this relationship with this substance that's part of us as individuals and the world around us, but it drives the weather. It drives how we feel about the weather, whether it's the level of humidity. Is it dry? Is it moist? Again, those things are what we feel. And it also, interestingly enough, is other times we feel weather, it's due to water. And that's where I brought up the example of evaporative cooling, right? We sweat, water's coming out of us. But when we get a good wind going, it cools us off because of the way weather works, right? And evaporative cooling works. So all these things come into play. It's an amazing thing, water. And I love snow, but I love water in general. And I love all the things that it does for me in the weather sphere. And I hope you do too. Fundamentally, I hope you get something out of that whole connection, right? But that's why I thought it'd be fun to play with it today. I don't know. Let me know if water came to your mind. Let me know if it didn't. Let me know whatever it was, okay? But if there's something else that you think is more fundamental about weather that you, I mean, like I said, it's, it's what provides to me the most diversity for us all and the reminder that weather is happening around us kind of all the time. Water. It's really simple. H2O. We live in a world where it can be in liquid phase, solid, or gas, just within the natural temperatures of our planet. And that's why a planet like Earth is so unique and different from the others. But it's also why we're going to need it if we're going to go somewhere else and live on another world as well. All right, I'm going to let you go. Well, I know it's a little different episode. Just thought I'd have some fun with it. Hope you enjoyed it too. Reach out to me if you get a chance. Say hello. Let me know what you're up to, questions, comments, thoughts, whatever it might be. What is about the weather at gmail.com. Of course, Twitter. I already talked about that earlier. I hope you're having a great week and may water and the water elements of weather touch you in a way that reminds you that there's much more to weather than the weather itself.